Hi, Zainab. How are you? Hi, Sophia. How are you? Hi, Alana. How are you? Hey, Brianna. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm very excited to do this interview because you're a Long Island girl just like me. So. Where are you from? I'm from Rockville Center. Okay. Smithtown, St. James. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Brianna, Alana, Madonna, Rihanna. Oh, well, there we go. So I'd like to first ask you, what drew you to this role? Oh, man. Well, speaking with Alana, when she first called me and said, hey, I wrote this movie and I want you to read it. Um, we talked about themes, you know, the patriarchy, the way that so many women internalize misogyny, um, privilege, access. And I had luckily known Alana personally from, you know, friends who introduced us many years ago and then years of showing up for social justice issues. So I understand that she's deeply introspective um, and wants to show up in the right ways in conversations like this. And I was like, this movie sounds insane. Send it to me. Like these are big topical themes. And, and um, she sent it through and I, I knew what was coming she also sent it with an article about, and there's a million twists in the movie, but the really big twist at the end, she sent me an article about how that happens to women all the time. And I was so revolted. And so I knew that was coming somewhere. And still by the time I got, you know, through the movie, I couldn't believe what I'd read. And I, there were so many twists I didn't see coming. And I just felt so icky. And I, and it felt to me important to tell a story that sheds light in corners that are often left dark by the people doing harm in them. Mm -hmm. um, it, it felt to me like we could really start a conversation. I wanted to ask you, where did the idea for the story come from? So um, my friend John Lee, who I wrote the script with, who also directed the film False Positive, wrote a short film with Alyssa Nutting, novelist turned TV creator, the show Made for Love she recently created. And they wrote this weird, and I think Alyssa had had children at that point. She had had this, um, you know, actually I think it was a short story that they adapted into a short, like 60, 70 page fever dream, like a, a sort of like shapeless, amorphous, really just artsy ass short film, not like something that we're used to seeing, not something that is like, oh, that would go on whatever streamer. It was just this really like OG strange piece. And I read it and I was really, it was more, more than story structure. It was more emotion that it, it was containing um, a tone poem. It's also been called that short film and like short films like it. So it was like really um, that that piece was really holding space for grief around pregnancy. And I found that very interesting because I think pregnancy is told to us as something that is like gain, 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 plus, plus, plus. But there's a lot of loss, actually. And um, so I read it and for a few years, every few months, I'd be like, what's up with that? What's up with that film? What you doing with that? What you doing with that? And eventually I was like, Let, are we gonna do something with this? Let's write a feature. And John was like, okay, let's do it. So we wrote a feature length film. It's like, you know, it was like a maybe 60 or 70 page script. We wrote like a 120 page script that it was, you know, it became this, um, it becomes this kind of like fable when, when you do, or, or I really wanted the experience of writing a feature film and it became like a, a thematic world with archetypes. And that was really when we started laying in um, structure about the world that we live in, the system that we are all subject to living in. And when each character started holding, Lucy held meaning in this system, in the patriarchy as whatever, and her husband and the doctor and her friend and the midwife, you know, like started holding symbols for roles in this system that we all can play. And um, yeah, that's kind of how it came together. I wanted to start the interview asking you about a line that really stuck out to me in the film 
uh, where you tell Lucy, I'm not your magical negress and that she should see you for who you are. I wanted to ask you, what did that line mean to you? What meaning did that have for you, if any? First of all, that line made me choose to take, take the job. <laughs> I read that line, I'm like, ooh, okay. I think I, I think I want to be involved in this just because it just says so much with, um, you know, the, the, so, 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 the social implications of it where, you know, where people tend to place, they superimpose their idea of who you are as a, a woman of color, you know, where, you know, there are these archetypes that are superimposed on you, you know, you're the caregiver, you're the, you know, the, the wise, mystical guide and it's great to be able to say that to someone where it's like no don't make assumptions about who you think I am you know get to know find out who I am and don't just assume you have an idea of who black women are and therefore we're all like that and it was great to be able to say that because I live in a neighborhood where there are a lot of black nannies mm. and you know what I mean in Brooklyn. And sometimes I see that when I see sometimes women would look at me, you know, if I say, if I make the mistake of going, oh, that baby is so cute. I can see in their head, they're like, are you looking for a job? I'm like, no, I just thought the baby was cute. I don't want a job. I'm not a nanny. I just thought you had a really cute baby. <laughs> and so, because there are assumptions made and sometimes, you know, we don't often get to correct people and say you're wrong and so this one you got she got to voice it and because I find the character Grace to be she's very she owns she sits in her power she owns her power and she's also very straightforward and very plain speak spoken so I love that about her. Her character Corgan I mean I guess what does she symbolize in terms of the the themes that you really want to highlight in the film like where does she fit into that dynamic? Corgan to me is the ultimate example of, oh, she's like a nice white lady. She is an agent of the patriarchy. She is a woman who has benefited from her proximal power to this white heteronormative patriarchal system for her whole life. And I don't, it's interesting because we had a lot of conversations of, do you think she's aware of what she's doing in these moments? Do you think that she's not? But to me, it is it, the great sort of symbol of her place and her holding power and the place where she's always believed she is supposed to get her answers is when as a, as a pregnant woman talking to another pregnant woman in many of our scenes, when Alana's character Lucy is voicing concern and Corgan's response is, well, what does your husband think? What did the doctor say last time you were in his office? It is such a... It is such an expression of that type of internalized misogyny that having eaten, you know, fruit from a poison tree for so long. And, and I think what's really interesting about it is wherever any woman finds herself on this process of sort of learning and unlearning that our generation is really in the throes of right now, we have to figure out the ways that we have internalized that systemic issue. Um, you know, we've kind of been steeped in it. And ugh, it just felt so gross. There were days that we would do scenes and at the end, we'd both just be like, oh my God, we gotta just a little, like shake it out. We gotta move our bodies and get this out. Um, and I think about that through so many of the themes in the movie, you know, this idea that there is this man who holds a secret, who you trust, who says, oh, this is my own treatment. And yes, it's a made up fertility treatment in the, in the film, but he says, no, I created this. And no one stops to say, well, what is it? Everyone just trusts him. You know, even, even um, in the film, Lucy's, oh, it's so hard to talk about some of these things without like giving away a spoiler, but even the way that Lucy has fetishized this doula who is on this outside of birth experience with this man. And then, and then what does that mean in terms of the conversations we can have about the 4x maternal mortality rate that black women face like everywhere I looked I was like getting smacked in the face with with a really uncomfortable entry point into a societal issue that is on the table right now and and so I was inspired by all of those themes and then I also had those are macro right and then I also had to like 
shrink into my, I'm, I'm one individual person and I was asked to play this one specific character and how do I, how do I represent this woman? And what does it mean for her that her whole life, did she grow up in a house where her mom used to say, well, what did your dad say? You know, what, what does it mean for us as women to interrogate who we look at as our leaders and our authority figures? So it's kind of a mind fuck, honestly, but I'm, I'm really excited about the potential for the conversations we can have um, about all of these roles and systems, dynamics, data from, you know, social justice data to medical data. I, I think that it, uh, it enables us to get into a lot of things now. Yes, definitely. There are a lot of themes. I think people will find a lot of things to talk about. I know I walked away with a lot of questions after having seen it. You're a very accomplished theater actress as well. I wanted to know um, what difference for you, if there is any, between being on stage and being on screen? There really isn't that much difference being on stage and being on screen. It's, I mean, on screen, you get to be a lot more you can be a lot smaller and much more internal because the camera reads your face and your eyes, you know, where stage you tend to have to project more. But other than that, it's about fully inhabiting the character you're playing. And so in that sense, there's really not much difference for me. It's just a matter of scale and volume. You know, with, t- with TV and film, you get to bring it in a little bit more, you know, but it's, uh, it's the same psychological journey you go through in exploring a character. And you spoke about inhabiting a character. What sort of preparation did you do to embody Grace? I think what I did to embody Grace was just um, reading what she says, what, you know, reading what's written on the page and seeing her as just someone who is a very grounded person, first and foremost and very self-aware and very aware of what others might think. And she, she, she doesn't mince words in putting, setting someone straight, you know? And I got to really, and I also love being able to step into her shoes and see what someone in that sort of profession sees because I work, I'm, I'm an artist, I'm in the arts, I'm not from that, that world. So it was fascinating to see, to, to visit it and explore it. Do you have a favorite scene in the film? Not necessarily one that you were in, but just one in general, maybe? I think one of my favorite scenes, uh, also the most horrifying scenes for me, you know, the one where she's going to the, the gynecologist and she's going to the doctor and he's doing all the examinations, you know, Pierce Brosnan. I, I find, I, they're like, it's like a, I lo- a love-hate thing for me. Like, I love those scenes, but I hate them because they're so horrifying. The fact that, you know, as women, our first visit, most of us, our first visit to a gynecologist, they're usually men. And I'm like, that is so, why is that? Because it doesn't make sense. Surely the most natural choice would be to go to a woman. I mean, we have that understanding physically. And so those are my favorite scenes because every time I watch them, I question, why is that so normal? You know, what, when did it become so normal? Is it because there are, there are more men than women who want to be OBGYNs? Why is that? <laughs> and your character does speak on that a little bit in one of the videos that Lucy watches about how men have kind of dominated the mm-hmm. pres- the, um, the profession of ob- obstetrics and, and gynecology. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, and it's, you know, that's what I'm grateful for the opportunity to do this film because it's something I hadn't thought about. You know, I thought about so many of these things while we were shooting because I hadn't given them much because it's just so it's just we just accept them as the norm Mm -hmm. you know and so it's it was a great opportunity to really question why is this the norm and is there a way of redressing that balance you know do we want to redress that balance um you mentioned that this is your your debut film. Um and I want to know I mean you've done a lot of comedy in your career. What is it like to work on a to make a horror film I mean as a lead, as a producer and as a writer? Torture. Um so like okay so um to be honest with you, you know, when John and I were writing it, it was almost like this new version of comedy writing for us. We were like, oh, interesting, like a 
a horror scene can be a setup and a punchline where it's just rather than like joke beats, like in comedy writing, you're like, hit that beat again, the second beat of the same joke, the third beat of the same joke. It was the same beats, but of suspense and of something's off here. And then the punchline or the release of the point of that scene. So it really felt structurally when we were writing it really exciting, like, oh my God, this is kind of just like writing comedy in a way, shooting it totally different, genuinely terrifying. In the later seasons of Broad City, I started understanding maybe because our bodies were getting older and like finally reaching 30, but it was like, I started feeling like, damn, acting is more just like, you're not pretending or making something up. You're just like lending your physiology to go through some crazy thing you wrote. You know, it's like, I really started understanding like the body as a vessel in that way. And that was so extremely the case for this movie. This movie was, I was like filled with fear for a month. It was, it was horribly challenging. I was actually so grateful, you know, like I mostly in my work have the experience of creating, writing, starring, producing, right? But like, I have never been so grateful to be producing so that between scenes, I could be focusing on specifics and minutia and logistics and problem solving. It felt like this escape from being that character, which was really painful. It, it's, I'm, I'm glad I did it. And it taught me stuff about myself that I wanted to know, but I wouldn't want to play her again. Yeah, Lucy definitely goes through so much she goes through a lot and I will and my time is up so I'll just leave it on that end scene really being a lot um and kind of just a culmination I guess of everything that she's been through in in this journey for her to have a baby um but um thank you so much uh for this interview and congratulations yourself because I know you're going to be a mom soon so yeah, thank you um Another Long Islander for the world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll uh, you'll see Long Island for sure. I, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, so they will, uh, they'll know what's up with Long Island when they come out, no matter where, where in New York we choose to live. But thanks so much, Brianna. Pleasure talking to you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you.